ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Holland. I am here cutting the ends of the fields because it's so freaking exciting. Actually, it's really not. We're just harvesting away. Uh, we are now working, I believe, on the barley side of things on this giant mega barley field, which will produce for us literally thousands of liters of barley. Maybe even hundreds of thousands. Because that's the way we roll. I don't know where my semi truck is. Uh, I'll have to find it in a minute. But we're going to. What I'm doing right now is I'm cutting the ends so that the workers don't get lost. Because uh, they do tend to get lost. So I just picked up enough wheat in the sweep up and down and the, all that good stuff to fill her up. So I'm going to empty it out and we're going to move up to the next section and our class header is all dirty. It's dirty, daddy. There we go. She's emptied out. So we're going to move over here to the other side of the field. I'm not going to do any harvesting until we get up the other end. That sounded wrong. Somehow, it did not sound right. These fields are really dirty. I don't think I've ever seen a header get that. I guess I just don't farm big farms very often where the equipment actually has enough run time on it that it starts to get mucky. At least the harvesters. Harvesters don't get dirty real fast, so. So today was a big day in contractor world. I've got uh, my deck is finished. I've got a new roof on my house. Work has begun on the patio. I've almost got a f completed fence in my yard. Um, so very soon, Gromit will be able to run free uh, on a daily basis. You can go out for a couple hours and run around and not feel so cooped up in the house. And uh, when Moni gets here with her dogs, we'll have plenty of doggy space and lots of happy dogs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down here once and then back it up and run down one more time. And yo, big girl, I'm going to back it up. Whoa, I hate that song. Where do they get these lyrics? <laughs> uh, the stuff that I hear at weddings, it's like, man. <coughs> Could these songs be any more <laughs> obvious? Of course, they've always been since rock and roll. I mean, let's face it. It hasn't changed. Just the type of music's changed. It's no longer a rock band. It's now just a couple guys at the turntable. And not a lot of musical talent. Some of them are good singers, though. But Whatever happened to Shaka Khan? <laughs> I feel for you because I love you. Some of those artists, like, it's just funny. There were a bunch of them. Some of them were mega stars, like Janet Jackson, where that seemed like the uh, the career just went on and on and on. Paul Abdul, <laughs> and then you had Shaka Khan, who had one hit that was really a song about herself, <laughs> about how great of an artist she was. I think she had some other pot hits too, if I remember right. Like not hits, but like <clears throat> they charted, you know. But that was never, I can't say that I hated it, because it really was, the music itself is actually pretty good. Like, it's not my kind of music. It's like, it's like when you hear good country music for me. I don't, I like, like, you know, pretty heavy music and then really bizarre music. I don't go for country. I don't go for, like, pop, gospel, um, or R&B, jazz, like that kind of stuff. I just... A lot of it's very contrived sounding and like already been done a million times and I don't know. But there is some good stuff out there for sure. And you know, I can appreciate it for being good music. But nowadays, I don't know, most of the stuff like 
you know, my kids, especially um, the younger ones, listen, like, you know, it's kind of surprising. Evelyn and Seth actually listen to, and Mark and Ryan listen to Def Leppard, and, well, Mark doesn't. Uh, you know, like, they listen to good 80s rock and roll, and even Evelyn likes that kind of stuff. She likes other bands, too, but she likes mostly, like, rock stuff or instrumental stuff. You know, but I go back, you know, you go to Violet, and she's, like, totally, like, tick tocked out. And I'm just like, oh, the horrible music. Like, it's just bad. <coughs> I don't know about you. I think most of the people on my channel probably feel the same because, you know, obviously like-minded people watch these videos in general. So we tend to be conservative. We tend to not be, like, trendy or on the edge of technology. And to me, one of the things that's missing nowadays from music is just I mean, and not all music. There's definitely some good bands out there and talented artists. But in general, it seems like they're mostly just missing the music part. It's all computer. I don't know. I I honestly enjoy going to the counter and ordering a fr burger and fries rather than telling, typing it into an iPad what I want. You know, I, I just maybe that's me. But I feel like, you know, the thing that's going on with music is the same thing. It's just it's all robotic. We've lost the personal touch, and it's just, you know, there's no band anymore. It's just a guy with a keyboard. Sometimes, half the time, it's just loops. For those of you that are in the music industry, you know what those are. Uh, it's basically tracks that are pre-recorded, generic, and they mix them together to make a quote-unquote song, and then they call it music. Like, oh, yeah, like, you like my new rocket record? Well, did you have people come in and play that? Or, no, no, we you know, bought this, you know, loop sample and i've done the same thing like you know and i really don't like it actually uh i don't play drums i play everything else i play keyboard guitar bass so if i want to make a rock and roll record i can play most of the instruments on the record but two things happen one since i'm playing all the instruments you have like this bad what i would call homo homogenization because i'm me so i'm limited to the things that i do uh, part of what makes music great is the uh, camaraderie, maybe? The creativity that comes working with a group of people so that you have other ideas than just the ideas that you have yourself. So there you have the, that first problem with digital recording. But even solo artists back have done this, too, where they record one instrument at a time and they play all the instruments, and that's what I do. But... <laughs> The problem you have is homogenization, and you don't, you also don't have, you lose the feel because it's not live, it's done in pieces. So some of that energy is lost in the recording. Um, and the second thing that you have, and once again, I, I'm, I'm guilty of this, I use loops because I don't know how to play drums. So I buy drum loops, and they give me like a 4-4 four, four count, you know, get a nice, nice four on the floor beat, you know, boom. And I just loop that over and over again, and I'll throw in a cymbal somewhere like, <laughs> you know, and that's all I do. And so that's how I do my drums and my songs. And what happens is it ends up, it definitely takes some of the life out of the recording because, oh, crap. I was hoping we could run down. I didn't get on the jump on them fast enough. This thing takes so long to unfold. Whoa, look at that. Um, <clears throat> so it really does become an issue, you know, like, I don't know. You don't have a real drummer. You're piecing everything together. You know, and so even in my own music, I, I know that that happens. So for the rock stars and the, the uh, or not rock stars, but the pop stars out there that are just, it's everything is computerized. They're not, nobody even writes anything or touches an instrument. They just, you know, pieces part these different sound samples together. That's not music. I'm sorry. It's good programming. But it's not really music. So, hold on. Apparently I, apparently I left a cloth at the... Uh, there we go. It's a brewery. Now, for now, I'm going to let the wheat production go. I'm not going to put any barley into the system yet. We're going to store the barley. Because when we're done with the wheat, I'm going to need to see if we need to make more malts. 
or if we have enough malts to push our brewery a little further. But anyway, as I was saying, I you know once again, it's it. He's, everybody's got their own opinion on music, but I prefer instrument. The best solution I feel like for music is a group of people that play instruments get together. They put their ideas together. This is going to be a mess. And they work together to make a good album. And a real good band come on, can uh, play their whole album just as good live as they could in the studio. Uh, so, for example, like when you went to see Radiohead on their, when I went to see them on the Hail to the Thief tour, they played their songs, every instrument, and it sounded just like the album. Well, that's because when they recorded their album, they had all of their songs rehearsed, and they just showed up to the studio, plugged the guitars in, and played. And so when they went to do their live performances, the live performances sound just like the recording because that's how they recorded live. <clears throat> and some of my favorite recordings of my favorite bands are done that way. I know DeGarmo and Key, it's Christ Christian blues and, I don't want to say jazz, but they're like a blues slash jazz. Yeah, a blues rock combo. Um, they had a couple albums in the 80s that were definitely like piecemeal recorded. They were okay. But their best two albums were Streetlight and D&K. And those albums were... <sighs> Sorry, it's late at night that I'm recording. Uh, those albums were recorded live. And they have a life to them that the other albums just don't have. I'll tell you what, if you want to check out some good vintage Christian music, and I know most people probably, everyone's like, Skillet! I'm like, no, no, please, no. Not Skillet. Um, <coughs> Skillet's okay, but... Um, if you like blues, rock and roll, and kind of like pop rock, pop blues, uh, these guys would kind of be not as hard as ZZ Top. But uh, I would suggest listening to the Streetlight album from DeGarmo and Key or D&K. There's some really, really, really good 80s rock on those albums. Um, so I don't know if you get a chance to check that out. It's cheesy. But yet good, you know? It's just it's good enough. Cheesy enough, good enough. How's our sound doing? I feel like I... Just, well, I guess we're okay. I think the farm equipment's a little on the soft side right now. Eh, no, they're not bad. So good 80s Christian band, DeGarmo and Key. If you like, like, Brian Adams type rock or uh, ZZ Top, like, they're going to be kind of like that, you know? But they have their own sound. And that's another thing I liked about them. They were pretty unique sounding. They didn't really sound like anybody else. They had the flavor of the 80s, but they didn't sound like, oh, we, we're here and we sound just like blah, blah, blah. That was a big thing, too, in the old Christian music days. It's like, you know, they always wanted to sound like somebody, you know. So, like, Petra, why they sound just like Boston <laughs> or uh, Kansas. And they really did, <laughs> um, you know. And that was how Christian bands identified themselves. Like, we sound like so-and-so. So the people that listen to regular rock and roll could be like, oh, this Christian rock's pretty good, too. But it just was, I like the artists that were more, like, not embarrassed about what they'd done and ready to, to just rock out. Like, hey, look, like this is what we do, and we make our own music. And uh, Trying to think of groups like the Prayer Chain. They got some crazy, wacky music. It's really good stuff. Starflyer. Definitely shoegazer. <laughs> shoegazer rock. The Choir. Excellent band. Sounds like you too. <laughs> Not really. They were kind of a little U2 and cu like the Cure a little bit. Clean guitar. A lot of effects. But uh, definitely their own sound. Tell you what, they were like, they're kind of like the godfathers of Christian alternative music, man. The choir was around, I think they started as the youth choir, like in the early 1980s. And they went all the way through the late 90s. 
had probably like 25 albums. Uh, they still tour occasionally, obviously real small stuff there. When you go to a show at the choir, there's like 50 people. What's funny, though, is they're bigger than they used to be. Like, they never were super popular. Christian music's kind of a funny thing because, like, um, how do I put this? It's gotten a little bit different, but when in the 80s and 90s, like, people still had hang-ups about Christians doing rock and roll. So there were a lot of older Christians that were like, no, you just – you can't you can't have rock and roll and it be Christian, so we shouldn't listen to it. So they were dealing with that kind of stuff, and these poor guys, you know, trying to make a living doing this and making really good music, but just always struggling because the radio stations wouldn't play the more alternative stuff, like the Christian radio stations wouldn't support these guys. So they really had no venue except for playing out. So you'd catch them live, and they were amazing, and, you know, they'd put out great albums, but you'd have to get the albums at the concerts because, you know, the... <clears throat> Some of the record stores started carrying them. And I, I had a – actually, uh, one of the guys I worked with on my first album uh, was a sales guy at a pretty big Christian music store in the Cleveland area. And um, he, uh, he he would introduce me to, like, new groups. Like, hey, you should check these guys out. They're really good. Now, one thing that I think is cool – once again, I'll stop the tirade about Christian music here in a sec um, – but it just there was one place that the Christian music is really kind of where they kind of are on the forefront of the, the quote unquote scene is in hardcore metal. It seems like a lot of the biggest hardcore metal bands are Christian bands. Now there's a lot of non-Christian bands too, but you know, as I lay dying is huge. Um, what was the name of that other band that my friend always listened to? Um, I know Zayo is like considered like a. Uh, a godfather of, of, of that, like, hardcore metal. Um, though I'm not sure they're a Christian band anymore, but um, did I say August Burns Red? No, yeah, Haste the, Haste the Day, that was it. August Burns Red, and there's so many other bands. They're, they're just, and it's funny because they're, like, they're kind of, like, <laughs> it's, it's so, like, I, you know, like, there's a stigma. You know, in the 80s it was, like, you listen to Christian music? Oh, that's so cheesy, you know. And I think that these bands, are, they're cool because they've, they've kind of destroyed that. They're really good at what they do. And, you know, it's not necessarily my kind of – I don't dig the rah, 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 like those kind of lyrics. But the – but the uh, they're really good at what they do. The guitar players are really good. The band members are all, like, really, you know, great players. And they're not looked down or frowned upon by the community. Like, usually, you know, they – Oh, it's cheesy Christian music. That nobody nobody looks at them like that because they're actually pretty cool. Like, oh no, these guys are really good musicians. You know, like they're respected, and that's that's an interesting thing to me to see. Because <laughs> growing up, like I said, all the bands that I liked, like you know, like the Prayer Chain, these guys never got anywhere because they just couldn't get the the radio play and the support to get them out there. They were one, you know, great bands, but they just never had the support. So they'd give up. You know, they they do two or three albums. And give up because they just weren't making any money and they're getting older and it's like, well, you know, we have to live our lives now. So they would get married and have kids and just and quit because it just there was nothing. There was no money there. So I think I saw which cool. What One thing that was cool is I made a recommendation. Oh, like a year ago. Uh, my favorite album is called Coming to Life and it's by a band called The Normals. And what I thought was neat was there was one or two people over the last year that have said, hey, I checked out that album, and you were right. It's, like, my favorite album now. So I thought that was pretty neat. Like, there's a Christian band that, like, nobody knows about. They never went anywhere. The singer actually went somewhere. He, he, he's in a much bigger Christian band called Cademan's Call, or was for a while. I don't know if he still is. But, but um, you know, his band, The Normals, they had three albums, and they gave up. But they were great. They were phenomenal. Uh, oh, well, what are you going to do? It's tough being a Christian and and being a musician. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's like when you're a Christian and you like motorcycles, you know. It's like a lot of places. That's one of the things I like about our church. The church that we go to, they're they're very motorcycle friendly. Like, they even have like a motorcycle, like the motorcycle parking lot is like right next to the front doors. So, like, all the people that ride bikes get like first class parking. Because they're like, you know what? It's okay to to like, to to have a life, you know. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you can't live a little bit you know doesn't mean to do shady things but <coughs> it's okay to ride a motorcycle and maybe even have a tattoo i don't know that that's a little that's a little taboo 
I know there's some of you that are like, no, no, no. Uh, I personally, I wouldn't get a tattoo myself. I think they're gross, but. Yeah. So there's that. So we've got a good harvest going. Um, I'm going to let this thing finish tonight. We'll, we'll finish off the episode here. Got about 10 minutes left. I try to make these about a half an hour episode, so I'll give you a little snippet of where we're at. And uh, I'll pick you up again. I'll, I'll get this thing done tonight. Uh, once again, this is wheat. I th I'm going to have to look. I thought this was... No, I guess the other one was barley. Uh, do we need wheat for the for malts? I better go check that out. I might have made a mistake. Oh, well, if I did, I did. While the harvester's running down the field here, we'll go check real quick. Uh, having that panic moment inside of, did I screw something up? Probably. Knowing me, the answer is yes. All right, so let's dump this off here, and I will be over there in just lickety split second. Hang on one sec, folks. Oh, no, okay, so I did it right. Wizen is wheat. We've got plenty of Wasser and Learpalatin, but we need, to, we need wheat. Gerst, so we're doing that. All right, cool. All right, that harvester is coming down the field, so I'm going to go. we got a little bit of time. He'll turn around. If I don't make it, he'll turn around and stop, so we'll be okay either way, but... I need to stay off the field. Whoa. This truck, you know, it's a mod thing. When we're underweight, this truck is not appreciating the weight. That kind of sucks because I need this truck for the series. Its shocks are responding a little too much for the weight. We almost need it to be dual axle. But I don't think this had a dual axle option. They don't do that with these trucks in this game. <laughs> Top speed's 12 miles an hour. Not great. Now, what's funny is it didn't do this with the uh, the water. Hmm. I can't get the back to open. There we go. Oh, come on. You can do this. Well, that's that. It's probably not too safe to drive with it up. Though I've seen guys do that all the time. They just smack them into bridges, and it seems like everything's okay. A little bent, but, you know. Uh, it's so funny when you see that. It's like, no, 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 no. What's that guy doing? Oh, my God. Smack. Rips bridge apart. Rips trailer apart. Usually the trailer loses and the bridge wins, but sometimes... I'm going to actually get turned around when I don't have weight on the back of the truck. All right. Get out there. <coughs> well, good. I'm glad because I was thinking I was crazy. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Did I switch our crops? And I gotta get I gotta catch this guy. I don't want him to turn around and go the other way. Otherwise we'll never get to the spigot. So 
So our dreams of owning a horsey farm have been dashed. My credit's too bad. We have the money to do it, just not the credit to do it. So I'm going to have to build a couple of years of credit, and then we'll try again, maybe two or three years. So in the meantime, we're fixing up the house and making it nice and uh, adding some things that will make it worth more when we go to sell it. And uh, I'm super happy. I've got a new roof on the house. I've got the garage is fixed. We had a big leak in there, and that's been fixed. Um, and uh, my, uh, so I got some dead trees taken down. Uh, new fence put in for grommet. They're building a patio. I've got a deck, and I put a hot tub back there. That, that'll be coming in August. Everybody's sold out, but I'm excited to have a hot tub. What in my line of work, um, which is the wedding photography primarily, it's not. The normal building photography, no big deal, but the wedding photography is very um, physical. And, you know, we get out there on these, you know, 90-degree days. I come home, it's cooler at night, but I'm, my muscles are super, super sore. My feet are sore. And I found that hot tubs, my friend used to have a hot tub, and he'd let us come over after every wedding and use it. And it made a huge difference the next day on, on how sore we were. Well... You know, he moved to Pennsylvania, unfortunately, so I've been without a hot tub for the last three years, and I really miss going over there and just relaxing in the hot tub and then having the not sore feet and legs the next day. So that, uh, you know, that'll be nice to have that again. I really feel like it's part of therapy for doing these weddings, and it'll allow me to keep going for a couple more years because I'm getting really to the point where I'm burned out and not wanting to do them anymore. But they do bring in good income, so... It's hard not to do it. <laughs> you guys are freaking awesome. So, we are getting, we're about, I'd say we're about halfway done, not too bad. Now, this is season, so it's 11 in the morning. Time-wise, we're doing okay. Um, obviously, uh, our fields are... <laughs> I guess fairly small compared to real life because <laughs> getting a harvest, an entire like giant set of fields done in like six hours, eh, maybe that's realistic, I don't know. Seems like it's not, but... Um, I would say by tomorrow, in fact, let's... Mm, is it Alt-S... Take a look at the forecast. Um, yeah, we don't need rain until Friday. So we can leave the hay out overnight or the straw out overnight. We'll bale it tomorrow. We're going to finish the harvest up tonight, and then we'll do the baling tomorrow. So that sounds like a plan to me. So I'll get all that done. In the meantime, you guys... Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll go ahead and get the, I don't know, I, you know the hops are kind of goofy looking when we harvest them because the, the, it's a custom texture and it's not, in real life they, they hang the hops from strings and they hand harvest them. You don't use a corn header to harvest hops. So they're kind of like, I don't want to say they're, they're not, they're not like grapes, but the idea is kind of the same. It's like a viney type thing. So we're going to, um, I'm just going to go ahead and harvest those off camera. We'll get the hop harvest done. And so when we come back, we'll get into production. And we'll also bale these fields and, and sell off the straw. And hopefully make a decent amount of money on that, though. I, you know, I don't know. Can you sell straw? I, mean, I guess that's a good question, a good thing to look into. No, my game is going to freeze, right? Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Can we sell straw? We may. No, it's worth nothing. Shizzle sticks. Um, I guess we'll just plow it under. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother. Uh, I'm not going to bother with it because there's no point. If 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 it's not worth anything, it's not worth anything. Why why bother spending the time and effort to bail it? So we'll just plow the the wheat under. I'll remember that for next year, and we'll keep our uh, harvester in just spread mode because that might even act as fertilizer. Maybe I don't. I don't think it does. But uh, yeah, we don't need to put it in lines like this. So. We'll just let it rot away. Actually, if we leave it, 
it'll go away. But I'm going to I'm going to turn the fields and plant grass again so we have a silage harvest next year. And that also gives us our first layer of fertilizer, if you guys remember. So this is going to get cultivated under when we seed. And that's the way we're going to do it. So that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. It's been a while since I played Farm Sim. I'm glad to be back in and playing again. Um, life has just been real busy, and I've been sick with these allergies. You can hear even now in my voice, like, it's in my chest. It's not in my nose anymore, thankfully, but I'm just, I'm still having difficulty breathing, and it's, it's like I can barely walk the dog. I walk the dog up and around the, the horseshoe, which is like about a quarter mile, and I get home, and I'm just like, <sighs> And it's not, look, I'm fat, I know that, but I, even like a month ago, I was doing way better than I am now. It's definitely the allergies. It's kicking my butt. I was walking grommet 40 minutes a night and not having any issues. Now I can't even walk like 10 feet without running out of breath. So I got to get past these allergies and then life will kind of get back to normal. And I'll probably be doing more recording because I'll feel better. But uh, anyway, I love you guys. Have a great night. We'll see you next time on Kloss Farm. Stay, stay frosty. <laughs> Bye.